All right, I think we should go ahead and get started in the interest of time. Thank you everybody for joining us. We are here to host a robust discussion about learning through play and how to optimize this beautiful opportunity that Summer presents to continue learning and really maintain the momentum that our learners were able to achieve all school year long. We're gonna start with brief introductions and then go into an overview about Learnfully's mission and services. I will give you a broad stroke understanding of learning through play and then our amazing panelists will give more context into how you can really optimize the opportunities at home this summer. And then if we have time, we'll go through our services and then questions and answers at the end. If, if, that, if we have time, if we don't, feel free to drop some questions in the chat and then we can always circle back with you to ensure that your questions are answered. So I am Jess Corinne. I am head of educational services and programming here at Learnfully. I started my career as a classroom teacher, super juiced and excited to dive into the classroom. Quickly, I realized I was ill-equipped to serve learners in the way that they needed and deserved. So I moved back home and joined forces with Linda Mood Bell Learning Processes who have really refined the art of multisensory evidence-based implementation. I worked as a clinician, a consultant, a center director, a project manager for their school services division, and I ended my career as a regional director. I wanted the opportunity to spread my wings personally and professionally, so I opened my private practice and served learners both directly and by overseeing implementation as a whole. I consulted with different schools and a pediatrician's practice and really had the opportunity to truly personalize my recommendations and implementation by gaining more training in various methodologies outside of my original Linda Mood Bell experience. So without further ado, I'm going to turn the mic to Olivia, um, who is here from Kinedu. Hi, everyone. My name is Olivia. I'm a content lead at Kinedu. Uh, Kinedu is a company, a digital platform in which we create content around positive adult-child relationships. It has served over 10 million families around the world and we have been gaining experience in scalable technology and content delivery across multicultural teams. I started out as a teacher as well, a preschool teacher, and then moved up to elementary all the way to high school. Uh, then I participated as a school counselor for a while, high school counselor, uh, but I was finding myself um, a little frustrated because I, I believe my impact wasn't as much as I would have liked for it to be. So then I moved to the ed tech sector. I'm a psychologist with a minor in education, a mom, as you can tell, you will probably hear my baby in the background from time to time. <laughs> I'm a mindfulness instructor and I'm trained in diagnosis and treatment of learning disabilities. And right now I'm leading content production in Kinedo and I'm very excited to support parents around the world in their essential role in child development. Wonderful, thank you for joining us, Livia. We're happy to have you. Uh, mm -hmm. Next, we have Annika from Brainica. Yeah, hi everyone, thank you. Thank you for having me here. And hi from Mexico. I'm actually like a digital nomad mom of ADHD kid and I'm a founder of Brainica. We help uh, uh, send kids to practice math and financial literacy in metaverse mm -hmm. and uh, I currently travel with my two kids and work on this wonderful project and we are both with the jazz and Lisa uh, we are in the Lego accelerator working together and I'm so happy to to be here and to share my experience with metaverse learning Yes, we're so, so excited to hear more from you. Thanks for joining us. And last but definitely not least, we have our very own dear Erin Letrahand. Hi, everybody. My name's Erin. I am currently an education specialist with Learnfully. Um, I started my career oh, 12 years ago in post-secondary special education um, and a hand in program development and um, life skills training, job skills training, things like that um, for post-secondary young adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Um, from there, I navigated, that was brick and mortar, and from there, I navigated into the world of virtual education uh, back in 2017, where I worked at um, a charter school for a while, providing direct services and program development uh, within that charter system world, where I, uh, after that, transitioned to Learnfully, and I have been just uh, 
loving it and thrilled to be able to kind of continue diving into the world of virtual special education and services for neurodivergent learners. Um, and it's just been a, a blessing, total learning curve where I continue to dive in um, and navigate that world with families, but it's been really great. So I'm also a um, homeschool mom of four. And so they keep us quite busy. So I was hoping you would mention we don't that. We camp out here, but it's really great. <laughs> I was hoping you'd mention that. I'm also a mother of four, which I'll get into soon, but we are on this team of family of six. So I'm glad you mentioned that, Erin. <laughs> okay. So Learnfully, Learnfully is a personalized platform that allows neurodivergent learners and their family access to high quality educational specialists to implement multisensory evidence-based instruction. Our, our sequence starts with a, an assessment, we call it the SPARK Learning Assessment, that really pinpoints where the breakdown in learning is happening. We look at all aspects of cognition, executive functioning, and aptitude in both literacy and math. And then based on those baselines and findings, we delineate initial program recommendations that, again, are differentiated and, and can be implemented virtually or in person. Our community has access to a growing dynamic network of content, so they have the opportunity to maintain their learners' growth in between instructional sessions. And we ensure that everyone in the ecosystem of support for our learners has proactive communication in place. So we're constantly updating our families and the educators who surround the learner, as the learner is the center of our model, to ensure that they know real time how the learner is progressing and continue to provide that consistent dynamic implementation in order order to expedite growth and really maintain engagement overall. Learnfully is by far multisensory and evidence-based. We holistically believe in the power of multisensory learning and meeting our learners where they are in order to fully allow them to realize and then thus reach their potential. So we, you know, as learners, we ebb and flow through which sense we gravitate towards. We're able to learn and maximize through. Um, so we utilize all three senses in order to really en ensure that we're reaching each and every one of our learners. And then all of our programming, we offer over 15 programs. They're all research validated. We ensure that our programs have met the mark and have been able to prove and substantiate learner growth over time in an expedited fashion. Neuroplasticity is my sweet spot. I always say it's alive and well. Our brain is a muscle. It's constantly growing and changing based on input and stimulation. And so the, the research world uh, suggests that we are able to, we've been able to witness it firsthand, we're able to really change the way that the brain is processing information by re-streamlining some of those pathways to be more efficient and effective. So through repetition and consistency, and fMRI scans, we're able to see how the brain, it can change and flow um, according to that input that we provide in the multisensory evidence-based programming. Let's give a brief overview of learning through play. I think those of you joining us would agree that play is critical to learner growth and not just academic growth, but social, emotional, and cognitive overall growth. Um, these are the five variables or elements of the learning through play model, and it, they are embedded in everything we do at Learnfully. We ensure that our learners are connected, find meaning, can relate to the interest-based instruction we provide. They find find joy in our sessions quite often our learners ask for more time with their educational specialist or they'll start online and want to then transition to in person but they fall in love with their teacher and and are unable to to disconnect um, we also have classes and groups even the reciprocity and discourse of one-on-one -on -one instruction is socially engaging and interactive and we constantly are iterating. We want to ensure that our learners need, needs are met across the board. And so as we monitor progress over time, we're able to then thus gauge if we need to change courses based on the receptivity and responsiveness of our learners. And hey, who doesn't want to have fun while learning, right? 
Okay, this is the spectrum of facilitated play. It's an it's a dance we do instructionally, and I bet you find this as parents as well. Is that you have to you have to move throughout the spectrum based on your learner's engagement and interests, strengths, and areas of need. And so, at some point this summer and beyond, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of free play in your home, as there is in the classroom or during breaks and recess. But there is a balance we need to strike between facilitated guided and instructional structured play to ensure that our learners are again making the most of the instruction or the time they have available. A lot of research points to the fact that play is vital for learning success that through play we're actually making positive associations and more i would say stronger neural synaptic connections that then allow our learners to lean in to discomfort to take risks to then thus see themselves succeed because they're more able to make mistakes they're more able to exercise a growth mindset when they're playing they automatically associate the play to what challenges them in the learning realm. And so with that added value and with what we call the fun factor at Learnfully, we're really e able to accelerate the path to their potential because learners not only are fully engaged, they're finding joy, um, but they're actually seeing themselves progress through a program. And that feeling of success allows them to feel more confident overall. Here are some stats that I found about learning through play and also about summer as the optimal opportunity for caregivers and supplemental supporters to strike this fair balance between free and, and guided play, as well as structured play. Um, it is a well known fact that our learners lose momentum over the summer bottom line there's really no arguing it now the, the amount that one loses is really contingent on the learner uh, it's all personal but we we estimate about two months of growth if they they step back they regress and have to make that up the first couple months when they return to the classroom it is our mission to empower neurodiversity to ignite learning to unlock their potential all year long and that regression can have a detrimental impact on one's feeling of self-worth, on one's mental health and overall well-being. So we wanna keep the momentum going. We wanna keep them feeling good about learning. And the most optimal way of doing that is to continue to play, is to, to organically and naturally sprinkle in every opportunity you can to play with your children and in a way that then reinforces their underlying sensory cognitive abilities. Uh, there's a couple quotes on the bottom that I wanted to reinforce. Play is our fr brain's favorite way of learning because it has a positive association, right? And then play is not just about having fun, but about taking risks, experimenting, and testing boundaries, according to the American Academy of Pediatrics. So clearly there's a case here, right? How can we incorporate learning through play this summer to ensure that our learners have a added sense of bravado and confidence as they enter the classroom next year instead of those feelings of dread or anxiety that typically occur when a learner regresses over the summer months yay let's dive in so i'm so excited to hear from our panelists we're going to do a round robin so we have some questions for you and we'll just go one by one um, and then again as questions pop up through the participants, feel free to drop them in the chat and we'll try to navigate those as best we can. All right, let's get started. Um, so on my screen, I have Aaron first, not to switch up the order, but we'll go Aaron, Olivia, and then Annika. Why is it imperative for everyone to learn through meaningful play? Yeah, thanks for asking. Um, so I love the information you just walked through. I totally agree that play is the job of children. Like we all have jobs and we work and we learn and we grow, but that's the role that kids have. And so they need to see how, what they're learning integrates into their lives, right? Why am I learning something? How does it help me? Where does it fit? And right now in their lives as children, it fits into play. So you can really navigate so much more meaningful learning and meaningful education when you can integrate it into their lives seamlessly through what they're already doing, right? Oh, I get it. Hey, let's make cookies. Let's bake brownies. Let's go to sidewalk chalk. Let's throw the hose and spray. Let's kind of let's be really engaging and interactive because that's where I am right now in my life. And so I love being able to integrate 
things like that and integrate what they're learning already in the day to day. It's such a great way to have these little teachable moments in what they're already doing. I love it. And if you're facilitating it, if it's not free play, then you can explicitly call out or at least in your mind, check off those areas that are being strengthened through that implementation approach. So thank you for that, Erin. So appreciate it. Okay, Olivia, what do you think? Well, I, I agree with you too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because um, children and babies, I mean, are hardwired to learn and to play since they're born. As you were saying, this will grow and evolve uh, through time, but it's they're wired to do so. So if we can take that into account and then follow their interest and their guide and the way they want to play, learning can be way more meaningful than if we just instruct a few like skills or concepts or try to introduce them without actually making a relation between the concepts and their day-to-day -day lives. Um, there's also a very social emotional factor that I, I, I would like to include the fact that when children are playing with other children, with adults, or even by themselves, they have a chance to work on different social and emotional abilities. They can reinforce also self-esteem if they solve a problem by themselves. Or maybe you can have a very important uh, serve and return interaction with, uh, with your child while they're playing and then they ask you a question, you both pay attention to the same thing and it becomes a, a meaningful moment for them. And science has also proved that when we link one of our memories to an emotion, it becomes more meaningful. So that's an excellent way, way to prepare children uh, for their futures, like by just playing and being present. Uh, we can create, we can make children or help them become creative, uh, engaged and lifelong learners. We can help them love learning. So it doesn't become like this boring thing that you only do at school and you have to be sitting down. And I think that would be what's more important for me. The fact that they can love learning through their lives. This means that they can develop as much skills as they want. That's right. It's not about the content and curriculum. It's how they process it. It's how they associate to it. So I greatly appreciate you bringing that up and the generalization effect of how play then can be applied to really all aspects of their life um, through this like very natural implementation. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Olivia. How about you, Annika? Oh, I love I love what you've just said, the girls, because like, uh, yeah, but I'm going to add something about Metaverse, okay? Yes. Because as, as, as soon as I work with Metaverse, uh, because the word mean, meaningful is like a very philosophic word for me, because what is meaningful for me mm -hmm. can be not meaningful for my son, okay? Mm -hmm. And so what is beautiful uh, with the Metaverse is that there are, infinite opportunities to create meaningful experiences for each of the different kids. So uh, maybe my child loves pets. So we're going to create uh, like experience with uh, taking care of pets or some like girls love cooking. So we're going to create some cooking experiences, right? And so these mini games uh, could be really meaningful for each specific child. And it's really simple to create it in Roblox because Roblox is very flexible system. It's very, um, very, uh, we, we, every team uh, could be very iterative mm -hmm. with uh, creating games on Roblox. So uh, in my opinion, uh, like uh, uh, it's, yeah, we have to, we have to think about the meaning, but we need to understand what is the meaning for each specific child. And Love so it. the metaverse is a perfect instrument to create these different meanings for different child with different um, mm, um, values. Yes, <laughs> values no, I love it. And thank you for highlighting that because we each come with a different set of, of experience and and kind of focal points, right, in our careers. And Annika has developed a game for Roblox. It's a math game. And so it's it's just super engaging. And so I'd love for you to draw in those metaverse connections because it's it's somewhat new for me. Um, so I appreciate the education around that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Number two, can you provide examples of how you incorporate play into your services? Now, this might be a no brainer, but just call out maybe the top way is that as as a parent, as an educator, as a creator, you incorporate intentional play. Aaron first. Yeah, so I teach virtually. So when it comes to my students, um, 
it's all about the relationship. And I love what Annika said about really engaging each student individually. Like what I, how I engage one student is gonna be totally different than how I build a relationship and pull in play into a different session with somebody else. So virtually a lot of what I do is super intentional movement. So we might be on the computer, but that doesn't mean they can't be moving or we both can't be moving. So I love to have my students do jumping jacks or jump up and down or make funny faces or like, okay, when you're done, stick your thumb on your nose and wiggle your fingers, right? So it's building that fun relationship with my students um, and it's getting them physically moving. Um, and then a few other games and just some simple little tools that I use um, if we need to switch gears or take a short little break is, um, I'll use like hangman, something simple or charades, or sometimes in one of my favorites is that I've had a student make up a game on their own and they've taught it to me. And so when we need a little break, it's still letters, we're doing literacy. So it's still letters and he'll write a little message on the zoom whiteboard and cover it up with colorful spots. And I have to circle and move and try to guess what the message is. So there's an element of control there that he now has he's not afraid to make a mistake because he's in control and this is a safe space that we've created. And so it kind of is a way for him to practice what he's been learning, but it removes any kind of pressure to be right. And it's mm -hmm. um, super fun and awesome. So those are just a few ways that I incorporate it um, online, but there's a ton more. Yeah, I love that. I didn't realize as an early educator, early in my career, I should say, um, that I was I was explicitly incorporating play. You know, I didn't even realize I was just having fun. It was fun that I, it was important that I had fun as a teacher just as much as they had fun, right? So that we could keep each other engaged and motivated. Um, and I love the movement aspect of that because I, I loved acting out stories. I love playing dress up or having a wacky Wednesday. It, it could be online. It could be at home. We do it. I'm a teacher mom, mother of four, as I said, three of whom are neurodivergent. Um, and we do dress up all the time, like just however you can switch it up as long as they're interested in how you switch it up and they have agency and feel certainty in that. I think it's absolutely a by far effective model. So thank you, Erin. I promise I'll stop talking in between. OK, Olivia, you're up. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. Uh, well, going back a little uh, to teaching or even to parenting, you you can include it like almost in everything in your day to day tasks. If you want to uh, maybe like even shape a behavior, something as simple as to go get your coat that can become a game where you have to maybe imagine the path that you're going to go get the coat and you can compete with your child like who's going to get the coat first. And then you start shaping up these behaviors and skills, even if they're tiny, such as that one. Um, incorporating play. In our case, in Kino's case, um, we actually do it through parents, which is something a little bit different. Uh, we offer guidance to parents for them to play structured and non-structured play with their children, uh, recommending like the type of, of activities and um, uh, according to, to their age and stage, the kind of activities that you can do with your children. In That's what we do in our services, which is it might be a little bit different than than for others. No, I think it's really important to mention. So you you supply content, you allow access yeah. to content, but don't you also have play groups? We do actually. Yeah. Uh, we have like, this milestone assessment that I was mentioning. So parents complete it, and then with our AI, uh, we recommend the type of, of activities, and then we have another whole service which includes live sessions with parents through um, a virtual live sessions. We started without doing the pandemic because we noticed um, the lack of social interaction that children were having. And we started leading this play, um, live play sessions. And we also offer some other free play alternatives, in, especially in Mexico. We started, started to offer a few, a few weeks back um, toys that you can actually get through our webpage. And then they're accompanied by a play guide um, especially designed for H and stage uh, that's a little bit free play let's say because depending on the on the age we follow the play spectrum mm -hmm. so you can see how to use each toy for a longer period of time um, and we also have chats with developmental experts so if you want to have if you have a specific question about how to include play insert for certain skill or activity you can also write to one of our experts i love it it's really important that our audience knows what what is available so thank you for sharing that okay annika you're up okay i'm gonna sound as an old tape today <laughs> we're talking about metaverse and it's wonderful opportunities <laughs> to incorporate play but metaverse are already like good 
totally playful experience when you immerse there. Uh, you just change your character, you just change your skin, your skin, okay, the kids call it skin, right? Yeah. You change your looks, your clothes, you um, buy some virtual pets and so on. It's like from the very beginning, it's so playful the experience. And then our uh, approach is alternating um, popular Roblox gameplay mechanics with the uh, simple, small, pieces of educational content so for example the kids they start playing with uh, like um like um, running to like a parkour or like jumping into the obbies but then they they encounter a small piece of like a math task or like a math problem mm -hmm. and then uh, they solve it and then the new location is open and so it. it's like uh, um we we alternate learning playing learning playing but the learning piece of content is so small so they the kids they cannot you know discover that there is a broccoli inside the chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i and love that the small snippets are really important and i would say you know there are many there are many opportunities to do that live but to have trust in a in a game like yours that will do that organically where that my children would thrive in that environment they love to game um so it's all about striking the balance right like to, to incorporate that organically yeah. makes perfect yeah. sense um and they're already thrilled by the playful experience that they associate that love and joy with the mass task Ethan. like it's it's pretty brilliant. So job well done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's switch up the order just for fun. <laughs> just so that Annika doesn't feel like she's repeating. Okay, can you offer some easy to apply tips for how to integrate learn LTP stands for learning through play organically? How can we sprinkle this in so that kids and, and learners at home don't let on to us parents and trying to teach them all summer long? So let's start with Olivia. Well, I think, um we can create spaces and times uh, for playful activities. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it doesn't have to be uh, like a certain time, a certain day or something uh, so structured. It can be present in everything we do with our children. So after we repeat it a few times, I'm so sorry <laughs> for the screaming on the back. After we repeat it a few times, uh, it can make it can become a part of your everyday routine. Uh, from setting the table, taking out the groceries, cooking, all of that can become a uh, play and we can, they can learn through that. And also we can give children agency. Um, after a few times they have seen it, then you can give them the agency and you can only support them instead than direct them to play. You can see them as capable and provide opportunities uh, for them to think and to act by themselves um, in a social context that others have um, the same rights to. So you can listen to them and give them different choices through play. These are uh, like, give them choices, give them agency and create spaces and times. I think those would be like three bullet I points. I love that. That is such an important reminder. I, I had this brilliant idea that I would create like a play jar where I would have the kids also put in little ideas and I would add ideas as they come up so that they could pull like an idea during playtime because, oh my gosh, or they, they might get like sucked into, something else that they, that is not academically enriching. Um, so I think that's a great idea. Giving them the choice and agency is a theme that I'm hearing and I so greatly appreciate it. So thank you for that, Livia. And don't worry about the baby. We love your baby. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> okay, Erin, jump in. Yeah, so I'm gonna circle back to a couple points that were made earlier. First, um, I love tying in high interest areas here and I love incorporating relationship here, right? You have to know your students, you have to know your own children really well to know, hey, what are they gonna engage well with? What are they interested in? Um, I have a son who loves Minecraft. I mean, like we have to set limits on how long he plays his Nintendo Switch every day because he just loves it. But the cool thing about that is we can be at the store and he sees those Minecraft stickers and hey, yeah, this is going to be a really cool, fine motor activity that we get to do at home later. Or hey, let's do some reading on Epic on Minecraft. And we can really tie that into a variety of different areas just naturally throughout the day. And he's going to be interested in it. 
simply because of the content, the, the topic that it is. Um, and I have a daughter who loves princesses and dress ups and you should see her closet. It's like <laughs> princess city, right? So and now anything that she can wear, that she can put on, can integrate with that. We can do pictures of princesses. She's in kindergarten, right? So we're fine motor and letters and all of that stuff. We can draw, hey, let's make a princess and let's make her dress the letter A, right? So, super fun things like that, that we can just tie in um, with that. With summer, I'm a huge advocate for getting outside, being active. And there's a ton of stuff you can do there. Like you could go on a bike ride and go on a noun hunt. Where's the noun? Do you see any nouns? There's a tree. There's a house, right? Like, are you on the lookout for it? And like you said, Jess, having fun with them, like kids get that. They see you having fun and they're like, well, okay, this is pretty cool. Yeah, right? like, totally. thing. So I love anything like that, active and interactive and outside and high interest. So I'm going to fly you down to Atlanta and take my kids on a nature walk. <laughs> no, but I love that. I love getting outside. I'm right there with you. I love like silent walks, right? Like well, everything you heard, like, you know, that mindfulness approach of being outside, but even the great gross and fine motor is all part of learning, like climb a tree, you know, go like splash in the, the torrential downpour puddles we're experiencing right now. Like just get outside and when you're with them and present, that connection is memorable and they'll apply that to the learning that took place. So brilliant. Okay, Annika, sorry to close it out. I promise you'll start next time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, what I wanted to share with you today is um, amazing work of Randy Kuhlman. He is a mm -hmm. therapist and um, sent kids um, specialist. He used existing uh, video games um, for uh, learning, for teaching the kids uh, uh, different cognitive skills. So, for example, there is uh, uh, some Roblox experience, like for example, pizza, pizza restaurant simulator, okay? Mm -hmm. So we just go to this pizza restaurant simulator and we discuss with the kid what's going on there inside. So what he can learn into this experience, uh, what he can, like, uh, what he just saw, like how it's going on, how, how the process is going on inside this uh, role play simulation, right? So my, my advice is if your kid love games, if your kid, like... Uh, uh, video love video games, but they surely they do, mm. and so just observe them, uh, which the games they play, and then just discuss with them what's going on, why they love these games, and so what they can learn from it, what they can take to their real life, and so this is really helpful, and this is what we actually do in Brainica too. So just we we just uh, create experiences with the financial literacy and with the math but there are plenty of amazing experiences that you can use for this daily life small pieces of uh, learning every day i love it that's so smart and i try to try to see in my kids what games they play and have conversations about them and i even have my own accounts <laughs> So I can go in and try to like interact. I'm not the cool one though. Like I'm not, I'm not that, not equipped and fluid in it. Um, but at the same time, I love that reminder of making it a discussion topic. Like I'm all about the dinner table. I'm all about the car ride because they can't really like, you know, elope. Um, and so then bringing up topics like Roblox and the games they played and making connections through Socratic questioning, right? Like try to kind of navigate that space and help them make the connection themselves organically is, super smart. So thank you for that reminder. It's all about balance. I love it. Okay, I think this is the last one. How important is it to incorporate the facilitated play spectrum into learning? So I'll start with Annika. Remember that spectrum just for our audience, how important is it to ebb and flow and do the dance in between? Um, you know, maybe I'm not the typical uh, mom here, because I, I really love when my kids um, um, take this agency, you know, yeah. in the in the games. Because I understand that it's like a, a simulator for the real life. And so every single situation they encounter there inside, they also learn it, but in the safe way. For example, my kid, they uh, my kids, they encounter some scammers inside Roblox that one just want the, you know, to make an unfair trade for pets. Okay. Mm. And so they said, Oh mom, they just scammed me. Oh my gosh, they're scammers. Okay, but he was a suspicious man at the beginning. I should 
think about it, you know? Right. And so they learn it through these small situations. And I love it because this, uh, like, the, the Roblox is absolutely safe, you know, with yeah. the, this kind of things. And so I love observing how they, how they uh, learn for these, uh, like, strange, weird situations. And so I believe the, the more agency they have, the, the better yeah mm -hmm. but if we talk about the, the real life yeah we need to to make some guidance for the safety for you know for yeah for i hear safety. you yeah so the free play you know is is key and critical but the application and conversing helping them to to make the connections to the real world is more of that structured end right yeah Smart. yeah i like it great thank you okay <laughs> olivia you're up as long as it's okay yeah, that okay, is great. great. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it's very important to have the five aspects to uh, a hand somewhere. Maybe if you are, don't know them by heart, have a post-it or something to make sure mm. that at some time during the week or the month, or you make sure that the play, play with your children is being joyful, it's being engaging, meaningful, um, it's having some sort of social interaction and it's being iterative too, mm -hmm. iteration. And on the other hand, um, to understand the play spectrum, I think that's basic uh, to to get to comprehend how, how Anika was saying, when free play is best, when guided play is best, and when you need some balance or something in the middle. Um, and by understanding this, you can identify what types of uh, what type of play your children need needs at some point, yes. like a certain stage or place or moment. And I also think that if we understand the play spectrum properly and we do some uh, soul searching, you can yes. also understand what's hard for the parent to do. In my case, for example, I have a very very active baby. Uh, and I'm not that active. I'm, I like like reading. And when I was a teacher, I loved to read stories for my students. And then we played out the parts. For it's, yes, that's, that's my style. But I have a baby that likes to climb and jump and crawl all around. So now I have to understand, like in this whole play spectrum, I have to to make sure that I don't go um, to a side that I prefer. And yeah. often chances uh, for different types. Oh my gosh, that's so important. I'm getting so many aha parent moments right now. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> that's so important because I think sometimes, especially working like parents who are busy, we have multiple kids, we're working, like all these different variables that everyone has to navigate in life. And then we're tired, right? So we tend to veer towards free play or guided play, right? Or something like that. So that's so, so, so important, especially in the summer. I find it's helpful to have some kind of structure, some kind of routine, but then build in free play throughout that, you know, so it doesn't feel to totally rigid. Um, but I need to check myself. That's a really great reminder. I'm thankful for that. Okay, Erin, sorry, the finale. Go yeah, ahead. You're good. So um, I, I love all of this too. And I really think that's wise to see where you are on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, Olivia was saying with, when do I need to use this element of play? And when do I need to use that element of play? Um, and so we homeschool our children and I have two of them in school right now. And then two, um, two little, little, little. Um, and I, I love having an element of direct instruction with my kids when we're talking about like academic activities, academic tasks, reading, math, that, that direct instruction is, can be really important. It is really important. Yes. But it doesn't have to be the only way that our kids learn academic tasks. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be the only way they learn academic mm -hmm. tasks. So introducing a topic like that and then allowing play intentionally to be where they practice it keeps that repetition from getting just like ugh, boring, right? So I, it, it can be like if yeah, I it's ask disengaging. Them, to draw the, the same letter and that's all they do with that letter. But if we can go outside and we can draw it with chalk or I can have them take like the hose and make it on my driveway, or we can go for a walk and look for everything where it starts with that letter. It's so much more engaging and it allows them to do it in a safe way where they're like, oh, wait, uh, apple, a hey, apple, that's an apple tree. No, that's a different kind of fruit. And we can learn something else there, but they like, they're just consistently learning. Right. And it's in a safe environment where if they mess up or they do it incorrectly, it's yes. okay. 
Yes. There's no, no, no harm, right? In fact, it becomes an additional learning in, uh, situation. Um, so I really love using play in a way that's going to practice what they're already learning. And then I love, Annika, what you're doing with financial literacy, right? Playing integrates into that. So, wow, I mean, my kids are at the age where they want to start earning money to go buy mm-hmm. what they want. Or they're going to play grocery store or they're going to try to cook with me. And my son the other day said, can I, I will do anything to earn $19 for the Lego that I want. Right? Cool. Like let's work with that because we can integrate activity into that. We can integrate responsibility into that and we can make it fun. So I just think there's a ton of ways, but it's really important to be intentional about it. Like it's not just sure, go play whatever you want. It's let's intentionally guide our kids with where we want them to go and what we want them to learn, but doing it in a way that's really going to be engaging for them. Mm-hmm. Not my preference, like you guys were saying, but what is your preference? Let's do it your way. Yeah. But sometimes they just need a little bit of a boost to figure out what that is. I love it. I'm so in awe of you ladies. Thank you so much for all that great feedback. What's just one piece? We'll close out with just one piece of advice you'd like to offer to caregivers this summer. Um, we'll start with Annika. What's one piece of advice? Just become a child and play yourself. Oh, that's <laughs> huge. Yes, so valuable. I love it. Thank you. Olivia. Uh, I think be mindful of what your child prefers and try to include it and also be playful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you're playful, they're are going to be oh and they're so much more comfortable right yeah i love that okay aaron meet them where they're at i think that would just be my biggest thing oh my gosh i'm loving this i wish we could keep going on and on this is like my happy space um so i'm gonna go just briefly over learn free services but thank you for all of your input this has been a phenomenal discussion and i'm so 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 thrilled um okay so the steps to potential for learnfully services are we start with a caregiver lens we want to ensure that we incorporate what you're seeing in your child and your learner and then we utilize that as we dive into the spark learner assessment to again pinpoint where that breakdown is happening in their learning and then come up with a learner profile and a learning plan that does incorporate engaging meaningful play Here's our assessment sample report. You can always recommend or request this, sorry, and we can send you recommendations, visuals, so you can see what that learner report entails. Um, But know that we're looking at interests, strengths, areas of challenge, and the overall impact of those, those areas that need strengthening. We provide instructional services all year long. We have educational therapy, executive functioning coaching, academic tutoring and study skills and test prep. The last two are more appropriate, usually near the tail end of the summer into the school year. We offer a flexible format of of really any kind, a combination of virtual, in-person, one or the other. We offer a one-on-one, as I mentioned before, pairs or small groups. We also have classes. We offer parent coaching. We collaborate with professionals or that ecosystem of support to ensure that we're all on the same page. And we can also make recommendations for asynchronous learning. So if you go through the Spark Learner Assessment, we make recommendations, it's not the right time. We can still give you some recommendations and and help coach you through the implementation and facilitation of those multi-sensory evidence-based programs that I mentioned before. We don't have time for Q&A and I'm so, so, so sorry we ran out of time, but we will for sure jump back into that chat. I'll make sure I circle back with everybody who did have questions. Hopefully we already answered them, Um, but if not, I promise to circle back. And again, thank you ladies for being part of our panel and thank you all for attending our summer learning through play webinar. We look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great summer.